Your Excellency, retired Major Josuka Arupo, the Vice President of the Republic of Uganda, and our Chief Guest today, my Lord, the Honorable Justice Alfonsi Shigamoy Owinidoro, the Honorable, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Uganda, the Right Honorable Amam Mbabazi, Prime Minister Emeritus and Senior Counsel, my Lords, Justices, and Judges of the Courts of Judicature here present, members of the judiciary here present, the Honorable Members of Parliament, my Lord, the Right Reverend Giuseppe Filippi, our patron and main celebrant for today, the Very Reverend Monsignor Dr. Philip Locker, our chaplain and all members of the clergy, the Catholic Lawyers Society International Board, Management, Administration and Staff, fellow professional colleagues, everyone in his or her respective honor, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, I feel profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to welcome you to this historic occasion when we launch various activities of the Catholic Lawyers Society International. I would also like to welcome everyone around the world who is attending this function virtually. Your Excellency and my Lords, the Catholic Lawyers Society International is an organization consisting of Roman Catholic lawyers from all walks of life. They are dedicated to the study and practice of the law and promoting justice for everyone equally without discrimination around the world. Your Excellency, our current membership spans across all the five continents. They are in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, and the United States of America, Australia, and New Zealand. But the majority of them are mainly from Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Nigeria, South Africa, Switzerland, Italy, the United Kingdom, Singapore, and the United States in Washington. Your Excellency and my Lords, our members are committed to upholding the highest standards of integrity and competence in the study, teaching, and the practice of the law in the world, faced with the challenges of injustice, unemployment, poverty, violence, and war. We would have launched these programs today, we are launching earlier in the year 2020, but our program was hampered by global challenges of COVID-19, pandemic, and later the Ebola outbreak here in Uganda. However, we have been working tirelessly within the available human possibilities to advance our mission to reach all corners of the globe. The challenges of COVID-19 and Ebola outbreak notwithstanding. Your Excellency, our mission and motto is justice for all. Justicia omnibus. It reflects our commitment to working for and promoting justice at all levels and for all people, irrespective of creed or race in the world. Our patron saint is St. John Paul II. St. John Paul II is known for having championed justice and peace for all people, irrespective of race or creed around the world. He emphasized the importance in his purpose of respect for the principle of subsidiarity, the rule of law, good governance, and accountability. His visit to Uganda in 1993 serves as a testament to his commitment to these ideals. Your Excellency and my Lords, our members are accomplished legal professionals of great learning. They are distinguished in their respective countries as persons committed to making a difference in their communities 
and in their day-to-day -day teaching and practice of the law. Our major goal is the strategic social transformation that enables justice to reach everyone. And as land friends who are reared and well-educated, we cannot sit in our chambers and leave society to deteriorate before our own eyes. Your Excellency and my Lords, the news reported on the 3rd and 4th of February 2023 at the end of the judges' annual conference here in Uganda that Uganda judiciary had a backlog of about 50,000 cases is not something for us to sweep under the carpet. There is need, therefore, to analyze these court cases, identify the core issues and the root causes which are systemically eating up the fabric of our society. Our times, as you may all know, are faced with a moral crisis. As lawyers engaged in all aspects of our society, we are privy to special knowledge and information which puts us in a unique position to know the real issues and challenges in our society. Therefore, our responsibility is not and cannot by any stretch of imagination be limited only to finding legal solutions for our clients, but to go a step further and identify both the root causes and find solutions to concrete issues and challenges that the people and the world are facing today. Your Excellency and my Lords, among the strategic issues that we have planned to address in the next three years, in collaboration with governments around the world and the Catholic Church and stakeholders include but are not limited to the following. First, protecting life and health of the people and tackling the injustice caused by substandard and falsified medical product on the market. Second, finding a solution to the growing phenomenon of street children and the disabled persons and taking care of the most vulnerable in our society. Third, tackling the root causes of slums in cities such as Katanga slum here in Kampara, Kibera slum in Nairobi, Kayetsha slum in Cape Town in South Africa, Mukoko slum in Lagos, and so on. This will be in a bid to develop decent and affordable housing to meet the needs of the growing population, especially in Africa. Fourth, protection of the environment by taking steps to curb carbon emissions in the atmosphere and promoting afforestation. This is emphasized by the Holy Father, Pope Francis, in his encyclical Laudato Si, where he says we need to care for our common home. Number five, intervention in the field of education by teaching, setting up universities, and promoting ICT and the digital revolution. This strategy further involves the development of skills and talent at all levels of education where we are involved. Number six, provision of legal aid and pro, pro bono services to indigent persons and the vulnerable communities. Number seven, provision of continuing legal education to our members to inculcate in them the principle of strict adherence to the rule of law in our work. This is because respect to the rule of law is the highest measure of civilization for any country in the world. Number eight, engagement in strategic litigation to promote justice and peace around the globe. Your Excellency and my Lords, these broad tasks we have embarked on entail part of our corporate social responsibility to society for it to enjoy justice and human rights. However, in our pursuit of the said targets, we are convinced beyond human contradiction that society cannot benefit from our efforts if we do not take appropriate and pragmatic steps in the areas we have identified. As earlier mentioned, our strategic objectives include improving stakeholder skills, 
reducing costs of adjudication of, case, of cases, defending those who cannot afford to pay for the high cost of legal representation, raising stakeholder awareness, and raising funds to, set, to meet our set target. By achieving these objectives, we believe that we will have made an important contribution to making the world a happy place to live in, fostering justice and peace, and integral human development. Your Excellency and my Lords, I am happy to introduce to you our management, operating structures, and the team members who are working tirelessly to make our vision and mission of the Catholic Law Society International a reality. In the interest of time, I will not introduce everyone. I will introduce just a few. On top of our governance is the Executive Council, where I'm the chair of the Executive Council and president. My vice president is called Mr. Hannibal Egbe Waifo. He is the president of the African Bar Association, and he lives in Lagos. Our corporation secretary is Mr. Charles, uh, Mr. Henry Chalimpa, who is with us. He's standing by me. We have a number of representation, but for perhaps clarity, we have got a representative who represents United Kingdom Affairs. She is a lawyer based in the United Kingdom, in London. She's called Miss Paola Fudakoska. And um, we have got a representative for the South African Affairs, Mr. Dominic Intokozo, is based in Cape Town. And Ms. Mburanzuki is a representative for the Great Lakes region. We also have the Board of Advisors, where our main celebrant today is our chairman of the board and our patron. And <laughs> Monsignor Dr. Philip Rokel is our chaplain and is the secretary to the board of advisors. <laughs> we also have a board of directors chaired by Professor Reverend Father Deusidedet Chigandi Nkurunziza. He is, he is of recent been a a lecturer at Makerere University, and the vice chairman is Reverend Sister Dr. Leonida Katunge. She is a lecturer at the Catholic University of Nairobi. Uh, the second one is Professor Dr. Scholastica Awino Orlando Omondi. She is a lecturer of constitutional law at the University of Nairobi. We have got Doc, Professor Dr. Dennis Bikesha. He is a professor at the National University of Rwanda and a member of the Rwanda Directorate of Prosecution. And there are many others. We have got Reverend, Professor Reverend Sister Dr. Vicentina Achora. She is a medical consultant at Guru Hospital. Then there is Dr. Jerome Mujisha who is a medical superintendent of Mutorele Hospital and our chairman of the Health and Medical Advisory Council is Honorable Professor Dr. Romano Mkumba Jaruhanga, is a medical consultant at Nsamja Hospital. Besides, we also have an academic advisory council which is headed by Professor Dr. John Mubanjizi. He is a dean, faculty of law, the University of the University of Witwatersrand Rand in South Africa. We also have a secretariat which is headed by Ms. Jovita Tukahirwa. I have tried to go through in the interest of time, but the details are on our website. They can be found. Your Excellency and my Lords, permit me to take this opportunity to thank our main celebrant and patron, the Right Reverend Giuseppe Filippi, Bishop Emeritus of the, of the Diocese of Cotido and the celebrants for leading us in the celebration of the Red Mass today. Your Excellency and my Lords, the Catholic lawyers throughout the world, as hinted on by our chaplain before the beginning of the Mass, celebrate Red Mass 
every year in order to invoke divine guidance and strength during every new year. The Red Mass is celebrated in invocation of the Holy Spirit as a source of wisdom, understanding, counsel, and fortitude, the talents that shine forth preeminently in the dispensation of justice in the courtroom as well as in the individual council chamber. Your Excellency and my Lords, as we have done today during the celebration of the Red Mass, prayers are offered for all men and women in the legal profession, in the judiciary, in the public life, praying that they be blessed with wisdom and understanding, that they, that they may do just what is fair. And all members of the legal profession are therefore welcome to the Red Mass, irrespective of what religion they profess. Your Excellency and my Lord, I'm therefore glad to announce that this Red Mass that we have celebrated today has marked the beginning of Red Mass in our calendar as legal professionals and it shall be celebrated henceforth every year. Your Excellency and my Lord, in addition to celebrating the Red Mass today, we have come together to launch the following activities of our society which will mark our engagement in the next three years. The first activity has been concluded, it was the Red Mass, and the second one is the Catholic Lawyers Society International Law Report. My Lord, perhaps this, my Lord, the Chief Justice, perhaps this refers to you directly, that this law report shall be published annually, and the annual publication of the class law report is intended to provide an invaluable source of up-to-date contemporaneous jurisprudence. It is a tool that will enable all judicial officers and counsel to dispense justice to all people efficiently and effectively. This is also a tool to help in depth analysis in the process of research, teaching, and practice of the law. The third activity is the class justice journal. This will also be published annually, and the annual publication of class justice journal is meant to provide to the members and the public a platform for research and informed dialogue on critical global issues such as climate change that currently affect our society. Therefore, all members and interested stakeholders are invited to send their ed articles to the chief editor for the publication and the details can be found on our website. The fourth one is an activity legal aid and pro bono services. This is one of our key projects through which we provide legal aid and pro bono services to indigent persons and vulnerable communities. This includes helping them to navigate the complex legal systems, providing legal representation in the courts of law, and this intervention helps to ensure that indigent persons have equal access to justice. The fifth is protection of life and health of citizens. Currently, the use of substandard, falsified, and expired medical products are on the rise. This includes both human and veterinary. Guided by Class Health and Medical Advisory Council, the Catholic Lawyers Society International is to carry out research and analysis and to enable it to identify the gaps in the medicine ch supply chain and inform policy recommendations to help tackle the injustice caused by substandard, falsified, and exp ex expired health products on the market. Our strategy is to work with the government and all stakeholders to address these challenges and ensure that citizens are using and consuming safe health products. We have got the rule of law and the strategic litigation. This is a method and a tool that we shall employ through class rule of law and the strategic litigation committee. It sits in Nairobi. This ensures that human rights are protected and respected by all stakeholders at all levels. And this further underlines the principle that no one is above the law. 
The seventh is land tenure, security of land tenure for indigent persons and vulnerable communities. Your Excellency and my Lords, due to the growing population around the world, the pressure on the limited land resource is likely to increase in the reasonably foreseeable future. And this has further been aggravated by the current phenomenon of trespass to land and land grabbing. In such circumstances, the Catholic Lawyers Society International is to advocate for land policies and laws that pro promote land justice for all. Land justice is a new concept that we are introducing in our schedule of activities. Your Excellency and my Lords, while the current social economic system, in the current social economic system, everyone is entitled to a piece of land, this may have to change. Because as developing countries evolve to a higher level of, of civilization and industrialization, it is prudent to consider adopting policies that allow only high-rise buildings so as to optimally use land. Your Excellency and my Lords, we shall specifically address security of the land tenure for indigent persons, especially orphans, widows, the elderly, the disadvantaged, and the vulnerable communities. For example, there is a growing phenomenon of rising number of court cases involving criminal trespass to church land. And perhaps this refers to directly affect the our priests and my Lord Bishop. The Catholic Lawyer Society International therefore is raising funds to carry out a pilot project to secure, survey and title all Catholic land for the registered trustees of the Catholic dioceses of Cotido, Cabale, and any other that may request for our help. This will further help the Catholic Church to plan and use their land resources effectively for sustainable income generating enterprises as a strategy of poverty er eradication in their respective dioceses. Then we have got a strategic intervention to cater for the street children. Your Excellency and my Lords, in the pursuit of justice for all, the Catholic Lawyer Society International cannot keep its eyes closed to the growing phenomenon of street children and vulnerable people on the streets of our cities. Therefore, the Catholic Lawyer Society International shall spearhead the process and work with key stakeholders to develop a functional centers to receive, care, and educate the vulnerable children on the streets of our cities and reunite them with their families. Number nine, ICT centers of excellence. Your Excellency and my Lords, as earlier mentioned, one of our interventions is in the education sector, specifically to promote ICT and digital skilling at all levels of education where we are involved. In this regard, we have planned to set up four ICT centers of excellence in the following places. The work has already begun. The first place is Polar D Plus Secondary School, Newman Primary School, and Newman Nursery School in Nyamirama Town Council, Kanongo District in Kabale Catholic Diocese. I'm glad that the provincial superior of the Spirit and Missionaries, based here, the provincial superior for the Spirit and Missionaries, who takes care of that part of Nyamirama, is here and we have been going through planning together, and we have done quite substantial work. The second one is Ogongoja Secondary School in Ogongoja Sub-County in the Katakui District, Soroti Catholic Diocese in Uganda. The third is St. Stephen Secondary School in Katakui Town Council, Katakui District, Soroti Catholic Diocese. These are in eastern Uganda, the neighbor Karamoja, and therefore we think in our choice of places where we can intervene, we go to the most vulnerable. This is consistent with our principle and our belief. The fourth one is St. Mary's Madera Secondary School in Soroti City East, Soroti District, Soroti Catholic Diocese in Uganda. 
So we think that we need to start with those to demonstrate that these things are possible. What has been lacking is the will, and we are ready to lead the way. Number 10 is the Leadership Training Center. Your Excellency and my Lord, the Catholic Royal Society International has planned to build a leadership training center in the greater Kampala metropolitan area in Uganda, and it will be our administrative headquarters, but more so a place where the members and stakeholders come and learn to listen to the voice of God in the scripture, in their hearts, and in the society. Your Excellency and my Lords, this has been informed by our research findings to the effect that the core of our society's fabric has been almost eroded by moral decadence. I need not to elaborate this. Today, more than ever, we are facing a moral crisis in our society. And this is evidenced by the recent craze of an attempt to introduce the anti-homosexuality law. That tells you where we are. In this regard, the Leadership Training Center will serve as a retreat center with a chapel and the necessary life-giving facilities, including a library, a seminar rooms, conference center, gardens, sports facilities, and a children's center. The center is to enable members and stakeholders to develop a spirituality that motivates and inspires them in carrying out their duties, supporting them to be transformational leaders that lead by example. Furthermore, this center is to provide continuous legal education to strengthen the capacity of the members of our society and other stakeholders. Number 11, which is our last project, is called Karamoja Peace and Technology University. Your Excellency and my Lords, focusing on the phenomenon of street children on the streets of Kampara, our attention was brought to the situation of Karamoja sub-region in Uganda. Most of the street children on the streets of Ugandan cities are said to be from Karamoja sub-region. Therefore, we noticed that there is urgent need to take a new strategic approach to the question of Karamoja sub-region and the Great Lakes region in general. To achieve a people and culture-centered approach, we have planned to set up a vibrant and dynamic university in Karamoja, specifically in Kotido, that focuses on developing peace in the region and work with the leaders and the population to identify their needs and interests so as to live a better quality life. The purpose of this university is to conduct strategic research and facilitate the process of a paradigm shift, change of attitude, and the change of mindset at all levels. Your Excellency and my Lords, Karamoja sub-region has been neglected for the last 146 years. This is from June 1877, when the Christian missionaries first came to Uganda. We are therefore convinced beyond human contradiction, and we have the firmness of resolve, that this Karamoja Peace and Technology University that we have embarked on establishing in the Kotido district of Karamoja sub-region in Uganda will provide the necessary platform to make a difference and provide especially to the youth inspiration and new opportunities like the rest of mankind. Your Excellency and my Lords, allow me to make four important policy announcements. Your Excellency and my Lords, in order to achieve and to get the assignment I have highlighted above, quickly executed, and after a due process, I have the honor and privilege to make known the following critical strategic decisions that have been made. Decision number one, that His Excellency, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda is the Chancellor for Karamoja Peace and Technology University. Number two, that Mr. Twinov Sinja Severino, 
is the chairman of the University Council, Karamoja Peace and Technology University. Number three, that Honorable Kuichin Grace Freedom is the vice chairperson of the University Council, Karamoja Peace and Technology University. Number four, that Professor Reverend Father Deus Dedet Chigandi Nkurunziza is the Vice Chancellor of Karamoja Peace and Technology University. Number five, that Dr. Lord Chap Paul is the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Karamoja Peace and Technology University. Number six, that the Right Honorable Amama Mbabazi, Senior Counsel, is the Regional and International Coordinator for the Catholic Loyal Society International's fundraising activities for Karamoja Peace and Technology University. Your Excellency, I would like to assure everyone that we shall disprove every doubting Thomas that this university can start in the shortest time possible and that it will succeed. Number seven, that other important appointments will be made in due course. In conclusion, Your Excellency and my Lords, these activities we are launching today are only possible because of the financial support that we have received from our friends, benefactors, and well-wishers from around the world. Most particularly, we would like to extend our thanks to His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, the President of the Republic of Uganda, and Your Excellency Jessica Arupo, our Vice President of Uganda, for your invaluable support. We would also like to thank the Honorable Kuichin Grace Freedom, our focal liaison person with the Government of Uganda, for her indefatigable efforts in coordinating with the Government all our activities. We would like to extend our thanks to the Right Honorable Amama Mbabazi, Senior Counsel, for his untiring efforts in coordinating our efforts to make this a reality. We also wish to thank, to extend our thanks to the Right Reverend Bishop Filippi Giuseppe, the Provincial Superior of the Congregation of the Comboni Missionaries in Uganda, our patron and chairperson of the advisory board for the wise counsel and guidance that he has been giving, me, giving us in our work. We wish to extend our thanks and gratitude to the very Reverend Monsignor Dr. Philip Roker, the Vicar General of Cotido Diocese, our chaplain and secretary to the advisory board for his counsel and availability whenever we need him. I wish to extend our thanks to all our members around the world for their efforts in making this day a success. Thank you so much, each one of you, for listening to me and for your kind attention.